Happy Vlogmas Day 17. Today we think we're going to go see Coco this morning. That's We're going to make an effort. Um, they had assigned seats and then they took them away, yeah. which is kind of weird, but we think there'll be seats. I think everyone's going to be at Star Wars, plus we're going yeah. to an early movie. First showing. Yep. And then we're going to, of course, do advent calendars today and probably some other fun Christmassy stuff. All right, chocolate day 17. Day 17. Now, see, you're still aging a couple of pieces there. Yeah. It's like maybe a train. No, it's a old timey car. Aw, cute. And what's I behind don't it? No. Creepy kid dressed up angel. in a onesie. Oh. I think it's an angel. I thought it was or a kid a, in a onesie. Or a kid dressed as an angel. <laughs> kid in a onesie. Because they didn't have onesies in, in Victorian era. era. All right, 17. Uh, I did want to make a note. These, I had a beer um, last night, and they all kind of taste the same. It's really weird. All these beers taste the same. They have a really tinny can taste to it. Ew. I think these like been sitting around for a while. Yuck. Yeah, it's kind of nasty. Um, 17. Do you see it? I do. It's down here at the bottom. There we go. Yeah, I think we got, um, what's that? The Das <laughs> Be Besendir Best Beer? Fest Beer. Oh, fest, so some kind of festival beer, I guess. So I think we can both agree that we've got two one and done calendars. We're not doing the beer again. Nope. Brian says no to that, and I say no to the Star Wars. Um, it's not that it's bad. I think kids would love it. I just personally am not enjoying building these tiny pieces. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's not my idea of a good time. Everyone's different. All right, we have a little arrangement here today. I finally put them back. They had all gotten disheveled and falling. Oh, we got, I think, Han Solo back here on the Zamboni. He's de-icing over here. <laughs> Yeah, Brian thought right away that looked like a Zamboni, and then somebody else left a comment saying it looked like a Zamboni, so we've got him de-icing the ice there. But, um, and then Kyler runs ship, I'm pretty sure, lands with the fins up, but the way this is put together, yeah, they won't go that direction. Go they and they, they don't even show it, they don't even show it that way on here. They definitely show them going down, so, I don't know. Maybe it's not a ship, maybe it's something else. Yep. All right, here we go, 17. Oh, I just ripped that even more. And I just knocked a few people over. <laughs> Got some casualties here. <laughs> that dude? Yes! That dude. My favorite! Alright, show the picture. Oh, the picture on here. Oh. Um, One of those Imperial dudes, Yeah, right? Imperial, yep. Alright. There he is, so we think he's classic. If you know different, please let us know, but that looks like the, when I say classic, I'm talking about episodes four, five, six. So here are a few more of our decorations that are just kind of scattered around. Here's Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and if you're wondering why they're not with the village, these guys are actually quite a bit bigger. Um, and you got Woodstock on top of the tree, love this. Um, I think this is also Department 56, it's just that the scale is completely different than the village, so that's why they're separate. And then I have the snow globe with Mickey and Minnie, and if you guys watched our New York vlog from last Christmas, um, I picked this guy up at the Disney Store at Times Square, and I will link to that vlog right there. And then... Sorry, this is a hard spot for me to get into. We've got a Santa Claus. And then this is a tree from Germany um, with tiny little wooden pieces that are really, really tiny and easy to lose. And now for a Peanuts musical interlude. Decorating for Christmas is easy, especially when you have impeccable taste. Awesome. So we did go to see Coco today. I forgot to take the camera, so sorry about that. Didn't take you guys along with us. It was craziness because of Star Wars. Because of Star Wars. It was really hectic. 
Um, but Coco was not the the theater was almost empty for yeah. Coco. I think Say there were probably... four other families besides us, yeah. roughly yeah. in the theater. But I liked it. I thought it was cute. It didn't blow me away the way I expected it to based on other people's comments. And I know everybody's different, but I enjoyed it. I didn't dislike it. Uh, for me, I would always put it in the rent category though. It's, it's not something I feel like I had to have seen in the, th we have movie pass right now, so it's essentially free to go see it in the theater, but I, I don't know. I yeah, didn't need for to me, see it in the theater. It was just kind of all right. It wasn't sad or anything for me. And it was just like, <laughs> okay, it's just a, to me, it felt like just a short movie that was drawn out way too long, you know? I would agree with the pacing. I felt like it could have been faster. Yeah. The pacing. And I thought it was kind of weird that Disney is kind of like. Um, don't, don't, that's a spoiler. Don't say what you're going to oh, say. I can't say that? No, that's oh, a spoiler. Right. <laughs> um, what I will say though is the visuals were really great in it for a positive. And it was a unique story. I mean, Pixar's put out a lot of sequels, so it was cool to see that they did something completely different but than I, all I, the other stuff. I they can had. see that you should go ahead and start getting fast passes for your Coco ride at the the boat, you know, the boat ride, because <laughs> that's going to happen. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, all through the movie, you can pretty much just see it. <laughs> it almost felt like they made the movie to fit in the ride. Yeah. It really did. Yeah, you could totally see it. So anyway, that's just us. I, I guess we have the hashtag unpopular opinion because we didn't like die loving it. And I squirted a couple of tears out in one scene, but it didn't have, I was scared I would be so upset, like up made me ugly cry. And then I was sad all day after I saw it. Like it just made me so sad. This was not like that at all. This was like barely a couple of tears and then I'm good to go. So it wasn't, didn't hit me the same way it has other people. But I think it also depends on what's going on in your life at yeah. the time, at the time you see it. So anyway, we thought it would be fun for Brian to try a Bloody Mary. I already know I don't like them. <laughs> He's only had one in his entire life and it was at the Flower and Garden Festival and it was one that was intentionally super hot. That was he, spicy. Like super spicy, spicy. even too spicy Although for this, him. this has the makings of... This has spicy, <laughs> so you can pan over and show the ingredients. So we were making this based on our recipe online from Epicurious. So if you want to make this at home, we're using that recipe. And I've actually never made one before because I don't like them. It's a lot of stuff going into this thing. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna go down the line and I'm gonna have to look at the recipe as we do this. So it's a cup of ice. Check. It went everywhere. And then three, oh, it's a one shot of vodka. I guess we didn't pour that out. Nope. We've tried to pre-pour everything, but we forgot the, the most important ingredient in the whole Bloody Mary. These big bottles are hard to navigate. So this holds an ounce and a half, which is what the recipe calls for. Then one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Let's see, three-fourths teaspoon of horseradish, and I was just going to use this teaspoon because I could not find a three-fourth, I don't even think we own such a thing, a three-fourth. So here's the horseradish. So I'm just going to put a little less than But I like spoon. horseradish. Yeah, you do. But I'm not sure if I would like it in, in a, a drink. In a drink, <laughs> yeah. All right, next up is three dashes of hot pepper sauce. So Brian uses this kind instead of Tabasco. I highly, highly recommend that kind. Yeah, this is better. Yep. So, one, two, Whoa. three. <laughs> there you go. That might have been a generous second dash there. Yep, tomato juice. Okay. So that's a fourth of a cup of tomato juice. A pinch of salt, which Brian has declined. Yeah. He's not a salt fan. Not just something nasty, drink salt. Well, you're gonna drink pepper instead. Yeah. I do like pepper. A dash I of pepper. pepper. <laughs> um, a fourth of a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. I'm not gonna measure this out, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit in there. That's about right. 
All right, I think that's it. So turn the camera down there because that doesn't even look good. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Yeah, it looks really good. All right, let's shake that up. I think this glass is going to be too big too. That's not very much. Yeah. We might need a shorter glass, but anyway. All right, so Brian went and got his food and wine. These were pass holder glasses mm -hmm. in 2015. They've quit doing this, unfortunately. We're judging the glass size off of what we see at Disney World, which they have gigantic yes. <laughs> glasses. But this recipe makes a, uh, a small, small one, one. Which is fine, because I don't think I'm going to like this. <laughs> Ew, that horseradish floating around doesn't look too appetizing. That actually doesn't bother me. Really? Yeah. All right, garnish time. Garnish time. It's a fun part of the drink. And unfortunately, we made these for a tall glass. So yeah. Oh, well. I don't know if they're going to sit in there. Some scrimps. Shrimp. Hey, that looks fun. Cheese. Well, this is what makes them look good. <laughs> All the stuff. Stick that in the shrimp. Wrap it on the shrimp. Some pickles. And of course, the it's, traditional it's, it's celery so stick. That's awesome. That looks tasty. Now, we'll switch hands, so give us a minute, and then we'll see how Brian likes it. Here comes the moment of truth. Right, is he going to like it? Hey, this is like, hey, Mikey, he likes it. I'm not too optimistic there. Oh, see, that's how I feel about them. I don't like them at all. Down the drain it goes. <laughs> oh, all that work and now it's it gone. It's fun to make. I mean, it looks, it, looks, it looks fun. They look better than they actually taste to yeah, me, yeah. but I've never liked the Bloody Mary. All right, Carmen's going to make her holiday drink. Which I know mine tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is a guaranteed good drink, but I'm going to go ahead and say for the record, you guys, if you follow us, you know this. We're not big sweet people. This is a tart drink. So if you like sweet, I recommend adding either orange juice, preferably from fresh oranges, not the pre-made kind of juice, or triple sec. Uh, triple sec will do it too. In fact, triple sec will make it sort of like a fizzy cosmopolitan. So if you like a cosmopolitan, you probably like that. I am not big on sugar though, so this is a pretty tart drink. I just want to warn you. So this also has 1.5 ounces of vodka and I know we have some gluten-free followers. I use this brand, um, it's guaranteed gluten-free. Um, there's a lot of debate over liquors gluten-free because they've been distilled. I just don't want to take the chance. So I like that this one's certified and it's good. So that goes in and then this is the part where I guess it's kind of bad because I don't measure. You don't want a ton. This is organic cranberry juice and it has zero sugar. It's just cranberry juice. So you do not want a lot of this or you won't be able to drink it because it's pretty tart. So I just do basically a splash, a little more than a splash. And then I fill it the rest of the way with sparkling water. And I do recommend sparkling water over club soda or tonic water. This is just literally carbonated water. Cleaner, there's no, guess, yeah, right. there's no other chemicals or anything. It's just water and CO2. So then for garnish, if I was having friends over, I put cranberries in the top. You can put put them frozen. They can kind of act like ice cubes or not. They float either way, so it doesn't matter. I gotta say it looks a lot better than the drink I had, <laughs> which did meet its demise in the sink. <laughs> and then because it has sparkling water, you can't shake it in a shaker. So I use this cute little present. Um, and before someone asked me where I got this, it came from Pure One, but it was like years ago. I'm talking like 10 years ago, so I don't think they carry these anymore. And I love them. They're so cute. All right, so that's it. And so then you cheers. Cheers. Very tasty. I like this. It's light, refreshing, and still makes me think of the holidays because of the cranberries. Forgot to mention, five minutes left on this pot roast. This has been going for eight hours. I started early, early this morning. And it's almost done. Should be tasty. It's kind of funny. I don't know if you guys have foods that you only like to eat in the winter. Pot roast is one of them for me. I like it, but I don't want it in the summer. It's kind of too heavy, but in the winter, it seems perfect. Here's the finished pot roast. Looks tasty. Finished the pot roast and got seven full servings out of one roast. And that's grass-fed beef, so it's a little more expensive. And it's local grass-fed beef, which is even more expensive, but it was still only $23 for the entire roast, plus the cost of the potatoes and the carrots, which that wouldn't add that much. So that's pretty good per serving, like 3 to $4 per serving. 
Got some bluebirds today. There were two, and I scared one when I walked up, but we've got this guy here drinking water. So pretty. Thanks for watching. As always, we appreciate subscribes, likes, shares, and comments. Happy Vlogmas! Thank you.